said it. This is the tachycardia, really true tachycardia, which is mediated, mediated mostly by accessory pathways, okay? That's why atrioventricular read really tachycardia it is called as. And this happens due to the incomplete regression of the embryonic muscular structure, which is present between the atrium and ventricle. So AV node, as we all are aware, due to its decremental conduction, it has a unique place, in fact. So accessory pathways are unique, although also unique in the sense they don't have that decremental property of the AV node. So that is why wherever we are, um, wherever we, a lot of times it becomes confusion. So we already spoke about the AV and RT is the most common one. So about the accessory pathways, how are we going to differentiate these? Like whether it is AV and RT or AVRT. So first of all, if the V interval is less than 70 milliseconds, this is a very important and very nice algorithm. So and if it tends to terminate without conducting to the atrium, okay? So definitely it is AVNRT. Don't worry about that. And then, uh, yeah, mm, the, if the uh, further, the VA less than 70 milliseconds, some of them, uh, yes, you try to do a ventricular pacing. If you did a ventricular pacing and you are able to see AAV response, again, it is characteristic of atrial tachycardia. Similarly, if you get a VA, his V response, this is characteristic for the typical AVNRT. Okay. Now the trick comes. If the VA interval is more than 70 milliseconds and you did the RV entrainment or the RV pacing and you saw AAV response, yes, it is AT. However, if you saw VA, his V response or VAV response actually, if you saw VA, his V response, it is again characteristic for AVNRT. However, if you get a VA, V response, that is the one which is characteristic of AVRT actually. However, when you are giving the his uh, refractory uh, VPB and you notice the tachycardia tends to terminate without even conducting to the atrium, that is the time definitely again. It is AVRT, okay? And in AV response, similarly, if you're getting fusion, AVRT will be, you know, uh, predominant. And then when you're doing the RV entrainment, you do not see any fusion. So this is the other also very important thing. Two important things you should never forget. The, uh, the, the PPI minus tachycardia cycle length. If it is less than 110, AVRT. Okay? And if it is going to be more than 110, AVNRT. So this can be a little bit confusing. So what I used to recall was, you know, more than 110 will be AVNRT. Less than 110, AVRT. So smaller for smaller. So AVRT has four letter alphabets. AVNRT has five. It's the long word. So more than 110 AVNRT, less than 110 AVRT. So this is a wonderful, very beautiful summary, especially for differentiation of SVTs. Yeah. So there are various terminologies, scientific ones, which is used for the accessory pathways. So during the sinus rhythm, it can be over. Over means what is happening is there will be an anterograde and retrograde conduction as well, which is, will be happening over the accessory pathways. So that is why you can see pre-excitation. And then a pa patient may have a WPW syndrome. Syndrome is the one which has a, you know, delta can be seen over there and the patient is also symptomatic. Similarly, you may also come across patients who are having concealed pathways. Concealed pathway means there will be a retrograde conduction over the accessory pathway only. Okay, so in the science we are to see the ECG, there will be no uh, delta waves at all. Similarly, during tachycardia, they can be orthodromic. Orthodromic is the one going down the AV node and going up the accessory pathway. However, they can be antidromic as well. Antidromic is down the accessory pathway 
and going up the AV node. So, okay. How can I join? I think you can already listen to the lecture right now. Okay. Um, so the EP criteria. So for, so after having knowing the basics, so what what is going to happen is whenever if there is a delta wave which you already see, then if you do the measurements, EH interval is going to be normal. However. The HV interval, if you measure, it is going to be shorter than 35 milliseconds, okay? Similarly, the anti-grade curve is non-decremental, okay? So, the AV interval is going to be fixed with closer atrial extra stimulus, so with increasing uh, pre excitation. So, anterogradally, whenever you are trying to pace, no? So, the pre excitation is going to, to continuously change. However, the AV is going to be always fixed, in fact. Okay, till two things is going to happen. The ERP of the accessory pathway is reached and the accessory pathway conduction is blocked, of course. Okay, so once you are pacing at a higher speed, remember these things. pre excitation will be increasing, increasing, increasing. However, the AV interval, A to V, is going to be fixed till the time accessory pathway refractoriness is going to be reached. So this is something very important point. I would really uh, like you not to forget this. And then at this coupling interval, the QRS complex normalizes as the impulse is blocked in the accessory pathway and is conducted exclusively over the AV node. Okay. So this is the sinus rhythm which is happening over here. Okay. And then if you look carefully, this is the delta wave. So you can start nodes in AH and HV. So HV interval is the one which is less than 35 milliseconds. Then you start pacing. So what is going to happen is at incremental pacing, the pre-excitation tends to start to increase. Yeah. So and then so over here till here and then the pre-excitation is lost. So this is what is the anterograde ERP of the accessory pathway. So this I have written safe accessory pathway. Why? Because the ERP was less than 250 milliseconds, in fact. So something is called as concealed pre-excitation. Why is it called concealed? Because accessory pathway is there, but not they won't get conducted anterogradely, however, only retrogradely. And that is the reason you will never be able to see a delta, in fact, for those ECGs. So that is where the concept of orthodromic and antidromic comes, which I already explained to you. So one of the other important concepts which we all should be able to understand is his synchronized PVCs. So let's try to understand what is the EP criteria for these AVRTs. What will happen is the shortest V interval during the AVRT is more than 60 milliseconds and QRS to HRA interval is of at least 95 milliseconds okay and then in the in the presence of septal accessory pathways the VA interval during the RV pacing tends to be almost you know similar to the VA interval which is during the AVRTs however if there is an AVRT when you are pacing from the RV we all are aware uh, what will happen is there is a simultaneous anti-grade and also retrograde conduction as well from the AV node and that is the reason why there is a short V interval. Okay. So, uh, orthodromic and antidromic tachycardias, they have slightly different criteria in the sense, so which is already summarized in this table. Okay, these points are very well written. It should uh, get into our permanent memory, I would say. So that's why it's very, very important, in fact. Okay, so we already explained about this very well. Okay, so these are the various locations. 
so now it has already been modified by the uh, newer guidelines so how they should be named in fact okay so this is how you should try to visualize them and name them as well so for example left lateral left anterior lateral left posterior lateral similarly the right anterior right posterior right anterior lateral right posterior lateral and right lateral okay and this is the right sided valve anteroceptal posteroceptal and the midceptum and uh, i think we have already had a session about the localization so this is more of a refreshment how you can localize those accessory pathways so try to first of all have a look on the fever morphology so it will give you a hint left or right okay so if <clears throat> if it is on the left side so for example to see the morphology for the lead three in fact okay three is positive left lateral negative left postroceptal like this okay then similarly this is how you should try to look on the different morphologies yeah so that's why delta wave polarity is very important so on the basis of that you can localize it further there are various algorithms as well you should follow whichever suits you well so the most common one is left lateral yes like almost 55 to 60 percent the least uh, common ones are the ones like anteroceptal in fact okay and then comes like the right free walls so for example how about those what do you do if there is an accessory pathway on the left side so what you do is there are two ways to approach one you can do anterograde anterograde is the one through making a transeptal puncture otherwise retrograde retrograde is the one and you have to go through the valves you approach over there and try to I use the LAO, RAO and find a good spot and just go and burn. Now let's try to understand the steps. Okay, you are pretty sure that okay this is the AVRT. So what you do is go and check the AH interval, HV interval. So HV interval you will always remember that if this is the manifest pathway, yes, they will be negative otherwise very very short HV interval is going to be there. So then you start doing burst pacing with the, with the V. So start looking at the VA intervals. Is it concentric? Eccentric? So for example, the conduction is happening through the node or through the pathway. And try to decrease the cycle length till you achieve VA Venke back. Okay? Then you start giving the extra stimulus. Keep on looking carefully at the a activation pattern which is resulting due to the S2. So for example, is there concentric or eccentric or you know there is a shift from one to another in fact. And and this is how you'll be noticing. For example, uh, how does the ERP is reached? Similarly, okay, once you are done with that, go to the atrium, burst pace the atrium, okay, keep on decreasing in fact till you achieve a Venke back. Similarly, that is the time when you look for the pre-excitation, bundle branch block, which you may be able to notice in the ECG. And then keep on giving the extra stimulus from the A. And keep on measuring the AH interval, which is resulting due to the S2, in fact. And then, as I already said it, whenever you are doing the pacing also from the A, keep on looking also for the AH jump and also the echo beats. Because echo beats are there, if they are going to be their AV nodal echoes, they are the ones which will be characteristic for the AV nodules. So parahesian pacing. Parahesian pacing is another important thing. So what you do is, pace from the His catheter, starting from 20 milligrams, and keep on decreasing till it doesn't capture. So this is the one which is going to be helpful for differentiating between the uh, septal accessory pathways from the free walls. We will have a different session on that. So, what are those pacing techniques for this? So, yes, during all these during these maneuvers itself, you may be able to induce a tachycardia. 
If not, you can use a isoprenal infusion, itropin as well. And yeah, during the tachycardia, if the tachycardia is there now, so what you should do is try to see first of all, V interval, is it small or less or uh, more than 70 milliseconds? Okay, uh, measure the tachycardia cycle length. You did that, then try to entrain from the V. So what is the response which you notice? So if it is VAV, VAAV, okay. Then after that, try to entrain from the A and always pace at less than 20 to 30 milliseconds, which is lesser than the tachycardia cycle length. Go for at least 8 to 10 beats and then you have to stop. So for example, for the AVRT during the tachycardia, if you give, you should give is a his synchronized PVC as well. When you start this sync pace protocol, so again, 20 to 30 seconds, milliseconds, which is going to be lesser than the tachycardia cycle length. And then keep on measuring the AA interval. AA interval. If AA interval. You have to see if the A is getting pulled in or not. Okay? But a lot of times when you are pacing, okay, uh, yeah, that you will, if you are, a lot of times the tachycardia is going to be there for a really, really long time. So you want to terminate it, right? So then what you do is 20 to 30 seconds again, uh, lesser from the A or V, you can just pace it. So once you are aware of these basics, as an electrophysiologist, you have also have to go around and map the different areas. So you can do it during tachycardia, during the pacing from the ventricles, otherwise during the science rhythm as well. So during the tachycardia, always look for the earliest A activation <clears throat> and the closer VA in fact, okay. And the V and A amplitude will be almost equal, yeah. So it is like the almost the sense location because what is happening is, you know, those accessory pathways are mostly located in the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve. Similarly, you can also during the ventricular pacing. So similarly like that. However, if you are doing in the sinus rhythm, so then you will have to look for the earliest V. Yeah. And, and keep on looking for wherever A and V signals are together. So the amplitude is going to be similar. And yes, if you can notice a Kent potential, so which is the pathway potential between two, you know, uh, two good signals like A and V or V and A, and that is the, there will be very sharp deflection. That is the one which is called as accessory pathway potential. And then yes, during application, the tachycardia must terminate with V. And during the V pacing, similarly, don't stop pacing. So you will be noticing is there will be separation of the V and A and further there will be no V conduction at all because you have obliterated that connection in fact. Similarly, if there is this, uh, do, uh, you are ablating during the science rhythm, you should not stop pacing and you should keep on seeing further separation of the A and V. And that is why it is very, very important. So let's try to give you some example. So this is the ECG, science rhythm. Yeah, so now we are having a closer look of all these basic intervals. So these are the different patterns of activation. So eccentric versus concentric. Okay, so now the tachycardia is going on right now. So, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to induce the tachycardia. So over here, now the pacing is going on with the CS910, okay. So finally, you are able to, so with these are the pacing spikes which you will be able to notice. And after this, finally, we are able to get the tachycardia. So now you are having the tachycardias, okay. So if you look carefully, what is this happening? Is, how is the VA interval? It is longer, right? The VA interval is nearly, I'll try to help you guys. So it is nearly like 160 milliseconds. So this is definitely longer V interval. So what is going to be the differential diagnosis? So you have already ruled out the AVNRT is ruled out. 
So the possible differential diagnosis is going to be accessory pathways, otherwise the atrial tachycardia. So now you are trying to give us his synchronized PVCs. And as I was telling you, so when you are giving this no, so you keep on looking at the AA interval, AA interval, AA interval, AA interval. And then if you look carefully, so this was like 350 milliseconds, 350, 350. But all of a sudden over here, you're seeing is this is 335 milliseconds. So what does it mean is you are able to pull in the A. So this is diagnostic of a accessory pathway immediate tachycardia. Right. So this is the another maneuver what we are doing. So we are trying to pace from the RV. So we have a pacing over here. Okay, at like a cycle length of around 320 milliseconds. And then you stop pacing over here. And then you see the normal tachycardia cycle length. So over here. So post pacing interval minus tachycardia cycle length is 100 milliseconds. So what did we learn was if the post pacing interval minus tachycardia cycle length if it is going to be more than 110 milliseconds it is going to be characteristic for AVNRT. If it is going to be less than 110 is going to be characteristic for accessory pathways. <clears throat> so this is the another evidence which you get it for accessory pathways. So this is what right now you are trying to again in this pace from the CS. When you are trying to paste from the CS, what you notice over here is there is VA linking over here. Yeah? And paste, paste, paste. Oh, yes. Uh, up, uh, over here, what is happening is ablation is going on. Ablation is going on. Ablation is going on. And then the tachycardia stops. So do you think it was a successful ablation? No. Why? There is a PVC over here. The PVC came over here. And that is the one which stopped the tachycardia. So don't get fooled with that, in fact. So what I always try to follow is whenever I'm doing ablation, so I try to do is, I try to do the mapping during the ventricular pacing, in fact. So that's really, really helpful. So that's why I said it. And uh, why we try to do the pacing in spite of having the tachycardia is because it is going to make your catheter more stable. Otherwise, what is going to happen no? if you will, uh, if you are not going to pace, so when the tachycardia will stop, your catheter is going to move from that side. So that is the reason which is said for this, in fact. So what is happening over here is, if you look carefully, the ablation is going on over here, okay. Ablation is being applied. So you can see it over here. So, but after that, so if you look carefully, VA, VA, VA is there. But after that, what happens all of a sudden? VA dissociation is seen. So that's why that was a successful RF application which was seen over there. And of course, when you will be looking, also the current potential is also gone, in fact. And then you should try to look for the VA nodal ERP as well after the ablation has been done. So they are trying to reinduce as well. They try to... Again, recheck with the AV Venke back post RFA. And then uh, AV nodal effective refractory period was again checked as well after the RFA, which was normal. And you try to always, at the end of the study as well, always try to check for the intervals like AH, HV. Because a lot of times you will be able to, you might be, you may uh, damage them as well. So I'll try to give you some more examples. These are the basal intervals which you are seeing. So you are trying to do anterograde incremental pacing. So what you notice is pre-excitation increases, increases, increases. Yeah. And then, so what will happen is in this one, you are trying to do a ventricular pacing. Even with incremental ventricular pacing as well, you will be able to induce the tachycardia. So this is what is happening over here. So you are able to see the tachycardia. You are able to induce. And then if you look carefully at the VA interval, VA interval is closer, right? Especially during the tachycardia over here. Yeah. And 
yes, even during the sinus rhythm as well, yes, V is there, but it's not so close. And in fact, if you look carefully, in the CS12 is the one where it is the closest. So what it means is, where is the site? So the site is, and yes, uh, if you look carefully over here as well, especially on the RF catheters, you can see very sharp potential between the A and the V. So for example, it, the RF signals is almost mimicking the CS12 signals. So this is a very good spot for doing the ablation. So we have already said, uh, yeah, you can do the mapping also in the sinus rhythm as well. And yes, uh, that is the time which when you will be noticing is there will be a low amplitude. However, high frequency will be there, which is the characteristic for the accessory pathway potential. So, so this is what is happening over here. So what do you see over here is, yes, it is there, it is there and later on A and V got separated. And the sharp potential, the high frequency potential which was there is lost, right? So that was the accessory pathway of potential. And then after the successful ablation, you don't notice the pre-excitation. The delta wave is gone in fact. And then you can try to do adenosine test as well. How do they respond? So they will be AV blocked transiently. In fact, when you are trying to do a VA pacing as well, you are able to achieve VA venke back. So, what about the right side, or the septal pathways in fact? So, some of the, the VA conduction can be decremental or non-decremental as well. So, we will try to give you again an example. The basal ECG, for example, what is happening is, um, if you look carefully over here, look carefully, like V1 to V6. So, v, uh, from V1 to V2, no, there is a acute transition of the QRS, that's what we see over here. And then coming to the basal intervals, AH is fine, but HV is like very, very short. So HV is like only six milliseconds. So you're trying to induce, but from the RV with the extras. You're trying again to induce, and then you notice, of course, it is non-decremental. And then finally you are able to induce the tachycardia. So this is the tachycardia which you are seeing. You also notice this. There is long V interval as well. Then you are trying to do give is extras over here. Yeah. So you are trying to give the extras. And then... Over there, of course, when the tachycardia is going on, you are able to notice this is septal AVRT because by looking in the CS signals. You are trying to give a his synchronized extras as well. When you are giving the his synchronized extra, if you look carefully at the AA intervals, you are able to advance the A in fact. Yeah. And yes, a lot of times if you are doing aggressive pacing, you will be able to induce AFib as well. So the patient did develop AFib during the tachycardia over here as you can look over here. Okay. And then DC cardio version had to be given to get the normal rhythm. And finally, at a very good site over here, what do we notice over here on the RF catheter? A, V and there is a very sharp high frequency potential which you have seen. That is the one which we have already discussed several times is the Kent potential. And after the successful ablation for A and V, they get separated and the Kent potential is gone. And after the ablation, what do you notice over here? So what is called as so the T wave which was positive over here in lead 2, for example, lead 2, 3, 
and AVF as well in the inferior leads, what do you notice? They become inverted. So this is called as the T wave memory sign, in fact. Yes? So then you are trying to do again an induction of the arrhythmia. It doesn't get induced, doesn't get induced. You are trying to again be a nodal effective refractory period after the... And you don't get it further. 